this video will focus on a learning target, I can calculate energy changes for any substance as it progresses along the heating curve. So as you've seen in class, um, when you add heat to a substance, uh, if the substance is just like a liquid or a solid or a gas, as you add that heat, it the heat is transferred into movement energy, thus the kinetic energy changes and the temperature changes. When you add heat and you're in a phase change instead, so going from a solid to a liquid or a liquid to a gas, that energy is all being taken in to change the potential energy versus the kinetic energy. So the temperature doesn't change, but the heat is still absorbed. So when it comes to calculating the amount of energy it takes to change a substance from either solid to a liquid or like heat up a liquid, there's actually two separate equations. So when you look at a classic heating curve where like on the slopes you have a solid and then a liquid and then a gas and the flats are the phase changes, here are kind of the two main equations. So you have one equation, which is Q equals MC delta T, and that is used for the slopes. So that is used when you have a temperature change. Q equals delta H times full, on the other hand, is used when you have substance change or um, state of matter change. So I'm going to hit each equation here briefly by itself so that you can see um, kind of how the equations work. So Q equals MC delta T, again, is used when there's a temperature change. So you can't use equa this equation for phase changes because the temp doesn't change. So the amount of heat associated with a temp change depends on, number one, the mass of the object. So if you have more mass, it's going to take more heat energy to change its temp. Uh, number two, the change in temp. So if you only change the temp a little bit, it doesn't take as much heat as if you change the temp a lot. And then something called the specific heat capacity, which in this case is represented by a C. So the specific heat capacity is substance dependent, and it's essentially it kind of is the potential energy component of this temperature change. So what specific heat capacity is, is it's the amount of energy it takes to take one gram of any substance and make it one degree hotter. So it's essentially how much energy does it take to move the object a little bit faster and make its temperature increase. This is substance dependent as well as phase dependent. So if you go back to this slide, I have the information here for water and the specific heat capacity for liquid water is 4.18 meaning you need 4.18 joules to take one gram of water and make it one degree hotter. A different specific heat capacity for ice and a different one for steam because there is different relationships with how you need to get it to move to change the temp. Delta T is uh, the final temperature the substance gets to minus the initial temperature it was at. A lot of people call this equation MCAT because it kind of looks like MCAT. Um, delta T by taking final minus initial gets you the right sign. So this is one of the only measurements in chemistry where you can have a negative. Um, and the negative here doesn't really mean none. It indicates direction. So if I have a positive heat change, it means I'm gaining it. And if I have a negative heat change, that means I'm losing it. So if I increase the temperature, meaning the final is bigger than the initial, I'll gain the heat and Q will be positive. If I lose heat and my final temperature goes down, final minus initial will be negative and my Q will be negative. The other equation then when doing a heat change is delta H times mole. So delta H in this case is a constant, just like C was. Delta H is substance dependent and delta H is also phase change dependent. So really delta H just is how much energy it takes to change your substance um, to the phase you're calculating for per mole. So it's a kilojoule per mole number um, and it's phase change as well as substance dependent. So it solely has to do with the amount of potential energy it requires to take those IMFs and break them. Okay, so um, for water there is a delta H for solid to liquid and then there's also a delta H for liquid to gas. So eventually we will see lots of delta H's, but for this unit we're just going to use the delta H of fusion and the delta H of vaporization. So fusion is from solid to liquid, and then vaporization is from liquid to gas. If I want to reverse and go from gas to liquid, it's just the negative of that uh, vaporization then, because instead of absorbing that amount of energy, I give it back off to go in, re in reverse. 
Um, and then for going back to a solid from a liquid, same thing. It's the negative of that fusion because instead of absorbing it to make it a liquid, I give it back off. The language here is a little clunky. I get it with the word fusion. Um, know that I'll give you these numbers on the test and help you out the best I can. So tomorrow we'll actually use these equations to calculate and see kind of how it works. Main message from this video is to realize there are two separate equations. Um, one uses uh, delta H, one uses C. The delta H one is for phase changes and the C one is for temp changes. That's it for tonight. Have a nice night.